These young men and women are medical students at the Indiana University School of Medicine. They are experiencing firsthand the real world applications of what they study in the classroom, including surgical techniques. The only difference is what happens here is real. Around an operating table, you might have a, uh, a third year student, a fourth year student, an intern, one or more residents. I'm confident that if you ask anybody in academic medicine what the secret is to a strong training program for students, they would tell you that it, it's, it has to be based on strengths in all three of our missions of teaching, clinical care, and research, that each amplifies the other. And this is one of the true advantages of University Hospital. More than half of all Indiana physicians are trained at Indiana University Hospital. Dating back to its earliest days as Long Hospital, generations of students had their first experience providing medical care to another human being right here. Healthcare is delivered face to face, person to person. Everybody who works at University Hospital, every physician, every nurse, every allied health professional, every administrator is there because they want to be. The uh, hospital is the host for the School of Medicine's uh, educational and research mission. Not only are we providing clinical care on a daily basis, but we're also working with scientists and researchers to discover new and better ways of taking care of patients as well. The lessons they learn here, those from the book and from the heart, will be carried with them as they go on to practice in cities and towns across Indiana, across the country, or in faraway places like Eldoret, Kenya. The IU School of Medicine has been educating doctors since 1903. Students spent two years at the IU Bloomington campus before transferring to Indianapolis to complete their clinical training at City Hospital. But a member of the faculty, Dr. John F. Barnhill, had other ideas. As a young man, John Barnhill was sick, discouraged, and poor. A prosperous doctor by the name of Robert W. Long took an interest in young Barnhill, restoring his health and spirit. Dr. and Mrs. Long came to regard Barnhill as a member of the family. And years later, Barnhill became a doctor and a member of the medical school faculty. When the question arose regarding what the Longs would do with their sizable estate, Dr. Barnhill suggested they give money for the building of a hospital that would offer clinical facilities for students, much needed hospital beds for the community, and become a seat of scientific research in years to come. The Longs agreed and gave a quarter of a million dollars, and the state legislature approved the purchase of the land for the building. Today, having a modern hospital in the community is an asset. The same could not be said when the location was sought for Long Hospital. Hospitals were not considered the best use of real estate in Indianapolis in 1911. And there's no doubt that the area between White River and Fall Creek was not the most desirable real estate in Indianapolis. Construction on West Michigan Street began and Long Hospital opened on June 15, 1914. The new hospital boasted 106 beds with 18 private rooms, two operating rooms, and x-ray equipment, modern for its time. The cost of caring for a patient in an open ward was $18 a week, $28 a week for a private room. Dr. Robert Long died June 18, 1915, nearly a year to the day after the first patient was admitted to Long Hospital. The generous gift made by the Longs created the hospital that evolved into Indiana University Hospital, one of the great clinical, teaching, and research hospitals in America today.
I would like to express my appreciation for my mother's care as a patient at Indiana University Hospital. One day she was very sad and the staff made her laugh so much she forgot she was depressed. Thank you to the entire staff of the sixth floor. Dr. Henschen has changed my mother's life for the better and I know she receives good care in your hospital. Thank you. Vicki Strode. The 20th century saw the development in rapid succession of serums and vaccines to combat such deadly diseases as typhoid fever, diphtheria, tetanus, bubonic plague, and polio. The history of Long Hospital and the IU School of Medicine reflects the history of America. The year the Long Hospital opened, 1914, was the first year of World War I. Two years later was the great influenza breakout. I've seen photographs of caskets lined up in the downtown streets of Indianapolis and New York City, small caskets, children dying of influenza. Long Hospital and the medical school grew quickly, but did not escape the consequences of the Great Depression. There were financial losses, budget cuts, job losses, reduced salaries, and extremely long hours for those who remained. But the hospital prevailed. And just as America emerged from the Depression, it prepared to enter World War II, creating new challenges for the hospital and the medical school. On December 7, 1941, Japan attacked the U.S. at Pearl Harbor, and America entered World War II. Here at home, plans began in earnest to protect the hospital against attack. Windows were darkened, air raid drills were practiced, and the medical school began an enormous transformation. Doctors enlisted at a greater proportion than the general citizenry, so there was a decline in the number of practicing physicians available. So the medical school accelerated the graduation course for students from four years to three years, and it became one of the first universities in the country to apply for something new, a federal grant to conduct research so it could attract doctors who would otherwise stay in the private sector into the education and research sector. It's application in the 1940s for research dollars that has led to it being the great research institution that it is today. As the nation's assembly lines began mass producing weapons, the need for doctors transformed the medical school into its own assembly line of sorts. The Army and Navy took over medical education Students were inducted into the service. They were paid soldiers' wages, wore soldiers' uniforms, and marched to class. Accelerated graduation rates meant that fourth-year medical students were assigned to Long Hospital for clinical rotation. In 1942, the first wartime graduating class of half-doctors, half-soldiers received their degrees and their military orders. Among the 107 graduates was the future governor of Indiana, and Secretary of Health and Human Services for the Reagan administration, Dr. Otis Bowen. As Clarion Health Partners, Methodist, Indiana University, and Riley Hospitals continue to set the standard in quality patient care, one of its most important standards is patient safety. In the past year, Clarion has introduced several patient safety initiatives, including being the first hospital in the world to use the Alaris 4 pump. The Alaris pump has a unique self-checking feature known as guardrails, which prevents a caregiver from accidentally administering an incorrect dosage of medication. Clarion has also established the Safe Passage Nursing Program. Safe Passage represents the journey of the patient from the minute they have contact with Clarion to the minute they are discharged and any care afterwards. Safe Passage nurses are specially trained in human factor analysis and complexity theory and are one of the reasons Clarion is leading the way in patient safety. Patient safety, part of the Clarion experience. For more information on patient safety initiatives at Clarion Health, visit clarion.org. Welcome to the Colt and Clarion Health Team. The incidence of childhood obesity nationally has tripled over the past 20 years. Indiana has not been immune to this epidemic. 
To attack this problem, Clarion Health Partners has collaborated with the Indianapolis Colts to create a childhood obesity prevention program that promotes good health and wellness through exercise and nutrition. The Colts and Clarion Health Team Teacher's Guide addresses child physical activity and proper nutrition and is accompanied with two demonstrational videos which are convenient for teachers and students to access during physical education courses or even homeroom. All teachers, physicians, and concerned citizens are encouraged to support the Colts and Clarion Health. With the support of the entire community, children will have the opportunity to fight the fight against the risks of obesity. To receive a Colts and Clarion Health Team Teacher's Guide, please call 317-916-3525. After the war, America was booming, and the Indiana University Medical Center entered a new era of growth. More than $18 million was invested in construction and renovation. That growth continued through the 40s and 50s, and by 1963, plans were in place for a successor to Long Hospital. It was to be called Indiana University Hospital. Phase one opened in 1970, and phase two, which included a clinical lab, clinical research center, radiology, and outpatient areas opened in 1975. Another highlight of the new facility was the nation's first 40 million electron volt accelerator used for radiation treatment of cancer. Funding in excess of three quarters of a million dollars was provided by the Indiana Lions Club. In 1997, they donated a million dollars for the purchase of the Gamma Knife device that allows for the pinpoint application of radiation to a cancerous tumor. Since 1947, the Indiana Lions Club has contributed more than four and a half million dollars to University Hospital to help fight cancer. Expansion continued throughout the 1990s, including a $32 million outpatient center in 1992, the Indiana Cancer Pavilion in 96, and in 1997, the IU Cancer Research Institute, 1997 also marked the year that University Hospital, Riley Hospital for Children, and Methodist Hospital joined forces to form Clarion Health Partners. The benefit of Indiana University Hospital's relationship with Clarion and the School of Medicine is the connection between education and research and excellent clinical care. A patient at Indiana University Hospital will receive treatments that are unavailable anyplace else in the state of Indiana and some of the treatments are unavailable anyplace else in the world. It's the core of our education and research mission. Even though we impart it out to all of our hospitals, the leadership provided by the School of Medicine at the Indiana University Hospital makes it an unparalleled resource within Clarion. As a major research facility, the School of Medicine is um, continually engaged in terms of both its teaching mission and its research mission in finding new ways to battle diseases. Those networked components of education, research, and patient care at IU Hospital parallel the technological and medical advancements of the late 20th century and the dawn of a new century. In surgery, uh, 20 years ago, we never dreamed of doing laparoscopic surgery. Uh, and uh, we are able now with very minimally invasive procedures to remove the cancer. Because of imaging techniques, we're able to identify microscopic disease that's not seen by any other means. The use of gamma knife, where we can specifically target a small area so that we cause minimal damage to the surrounding tissue, has made a tremendous advance. And Indiana University Hospital has been the, one of the pioneers in that field. The combined efforts of University Hospital, the IU School of Medicine, and Clarion Health Partners have resulted in the achievement of a number of statewide, national, and worldwide medical firsts. Dr. Schumacher performed the first open heart surgery in Indianapolis in 1954 using a heart-lung bypass machine. We also did the first kidney transplant. Dr. Miyamoto performed the first cochlear implant in both adults and children in the state of Indiana here at Indiana University Hospital. She said, you can make my life complete if you can do one thing for me. I want to hear my new grandbaby cry. Solid organ transplantation has played a significant role at the hospital, dating back to the first kidney transplant in 1965. The first liver transplant, pancreas transplant, 
and first bone marrow transplant are among those amazing achievements. And the rapid growth of the transplant program has seen Clarion and University Hospital evolve from 14th to 4th in the nation today in the number of solid organ transplants. One challenge in brain surgery is how to remove tumors without damaging normal tissue. Today, with the device known as the Gamma Knife, surgeons can destroy deep-seated tumors with radiation without collateral damage. For example, this patient would have lost an eye without the Gamma Knife. The Gamma Knife is non-invasive, painless, and takes less time than traditional surgery. Recovery time is also quicker. In fact, many patients resume normal activities within two or three days. In 1997, Anne Weifenbach became the first Hoosier to have the Gamma Knife procedure. Today, she continues to lead a normal life. And Anne is not alone. Every year, between 150 and 200 Clarion patients benefit from the Gamma Knife. The Gamma Knife, part of the Clarion experience. For more information, call the Indiana Lions Gamma Knife Center at 317-274-1197 or 888-283-6649 or visit clarion.org. The Indiana University Hospital Department of Urology, ranked 15th in the nation by U.S. News and World Report, continues its long tradition of world-class care by leading the way in traditional and minimally invasive surgery. With the largest laparoscopic and robotic surgery programs in the state, Department of Urology physicians are experts in the minimally invasive treatment of a variety of conditions, including the majority of kidney, adrenal, and prostate surgeries. Patients at Indiana University Hospital benefit from a multidisciplinary partnership between the Department of Urology and the IU Cancer Center, Indiana's only cancer center providing patient care designated by the National Cancer Institute. For more information about the IU Department of Urology, please call 317-274-7451. While infectious disease was the main cause of death at the start of the 20th century, cancer has replaced it as the number one killer in the 21st century. And the battle to treat and cure cancer continues to shape the future of medicine at Indiana University Hospital. Particularly in the field of cancer, there's been no other uh, greater time than in the last 50 years. Understanding how DNA worked and then how cancer also works by replicating the DNA allowed us to create different kinds of targets. In all the different forms of how we treat cancer, there's certainly excitement. One of the ways that we've commemorated the relationship between the, the school and University Hospital and DNA is that we were able to commission through the support of a very generous and thoughtful donor a glass sculpture by Chihuly of a DNA molecule and this sits in a very prominent position in one of our buildings so that as many people as possible can enjoy it. This critical and transformational knowledge of how DNA works is aiding the war against cancer that researchers and physicians wage on a daily basis with their patients. The physicians at Indiana University are on the front line to the battlefield, and I think our patients know that we're in the trenches with them fighting. We've advanced a long way in the last five years even, and if you look back over 20 or 30 years, we've really come a long way in our ability to diagnose cancers earlier and to treat and cure complex and difficult cancers that formerly had uh, nearly a 100% mortality rate. Hundreds of IU medical staff, past and present, have performed revolutionary work in the field of cancer. Names like Roan, Bond, Broxmeyer and Ehrlich, Laird, Williams, Sledge and Goulet, Gardner, Malkus and Lillamo. Another pioneer in the field of cancer treatment is Lawrence Einhorn who first came to IU in 1973 and developed a novel drug program for curing testicular cancer. This is a disease that had only about a 5% cure rate and when he put this regimen together, uh, he cured about 60% of patients. Now, the biggest advance from my perspective of what Dr. Einhorn did is that he didn't rest on his laurels. He continued to challenge his own work 
and he did trials, and today about 95% of all patients with testis cancer are cured. The cures that are being invented at university hospital, being researched there, are discovered by others, patients and referring physicians, and specialists all over the world on a daily basis. The two most spectacular examples are Lance Armstrong, who found University Hospital after he was being treated at a hospital in his home state, and the scientist on the South Pole, who was all by herself when she discovered a lump in her breast. She got on the internet, tracked down what whom it appeared to her to be the cutting edge researcher with the kind of breast cancer she thought she had, and using the internet and telemedicine was able to self-diagnose and self-biopsy her own lump through a connection at Indiana University Hospital. We have many, many treatment trials of new uh, drugs, trials of new uh, surgical treatments, trials of new uh, radiologic uh, tests to detect uh, medical conditions. And I think many patients are happy to participate in clinical trials when they understand that what's being offered to them is something that they couldn't get elsewhere. I feel I have the best job in the world. I love our patients. I love working with them. I love being close to the family. We have the tools here at Indiana University to make a difference, and we've proven that. It's with research, however, that we need to partner with our patients, and together with our patients, we're going to make a difference, not only for their lives, but for many patients to come. That belief is shaping the future of medicine at IU Hospital and plans are underway for the addition of a new cancer hospital. A patient advisory team was created to contribute ideas regarding treatments and to address the needs of patients and their family members. It makes me think of dark wood. It is very dark. It's, it's very, very dark. dark. See, now this, the shading, that's, yeah, that's good. good. Yeah, I'm okay with that one too. We want our new facilities to speak to treatment of not just body, but mind and spirit and family as well. The patient care advisory team gave us many ideas and suggestions for how we can care about them at a time when they're feeling weak, when they're feeling vulnerable. We took those suggestions as we looked at the actual physical facility and the program plans for the cancer hospital. Well, all the textures <clears throat> and the colors are very warm and inviting and soothing. Clarion and the IU Hospital are intentionally including families and cancer patients in the design of the new cancer hospital. Patients and families know what they require to be more comfortable, to be better treated, to have better access to care and information than anybody else. It would allow the patient to have control of something when as a patient you're really, you don't have control of much of anything. One thing they're always worried about is their loved one being there mm -hmm. and being comfortable. There is room now where before they, everybody had to work around everyone. And New Cancer Hospital will allow us to match our facilities with the high quality care provided at Indiana University Hospitals by a wide range of specialists. The hospital will have new patient rooms, but a big part of our investment is an outpatient space. In the future, we hope that most cancer patients will be treated on an outpatient basis. Dear Clarion, when my husband Paul was diagnosed with prostate cancer, he had surgery at Indiana University Hospital. Dr. Sundrum called our home to inquire about Paul's health and to assure us of our decision. Genuine caring professionals on staff gave us extra care during our difficult time. Your facility is so fortunate to have great people like Dr. Sundrum and his staff. Thank you, Paul and Rebecca Kissling. Throughout its history and alliances with the IU School of Medicine and Clarion Health Partners, IU Hospital has embraced and fulfilled its mission of research, teaching, and patient care. 
has a major research facility. The IU School of Medicine is engaged in finding new ways to battle cancer and other diseases. And the patients treated there and at other Clarion facilities are reaping the benefits of that mission while providing opportunities for new discoveries and treatments. This successful combination has led IU Hospital to a perennial standing in U.S. News and World Reports as one of the top cancer programs in the country. The National Cancer Institute has named it a designated cancer center, the only NCI designated facility in Indiana providing patient care. I see the future of Indiana University uh, as an exciting one. We are bringing new physicians in and training them in the most up-to-date techniques to take care of patients. The University Hospital is growing, both in the number of patients it sees as well as the number of conditions that it can treat. I think we're going to really see a large expansion in the numbers and types of patients that we see with cancer with the addition of the new cancer hospital. The history of IU Hospital is spectacular in terms of research, education, clinical care, second to none. The future should be equally as challenging. We're building a hospital system of which IU Hospital is the keystone for education and research to continue to provide the cutting edge clinical care for critically ill patients that it has in the past in the future. In the next 50 years, I think IU Hospital will not only be a statewide resource, but will be an international resource in discovering how we can open up the knowledge of the genome and find better ways of curing and retarding cancer. I think we're going to be making a lot of progress in improving the quality of life for the citizens of Indiana as well as the world. If Dr. Long were alive today and wandered around the Indiana University campus, he would see the people mover bringing staff and patients into the heart of University Hospital. He'd pass research facilities. He'd see the continuum of research and knowledge flowing directly into the clinical care. He'd be astonished and gratified that what he planned for in 1911 led to the inclusion of research and knowledge in improving the care that was provided in the hospital that bore his name. The University Hospital brings teaching, research, and patient care together in the same place and is dedicated to bringing the newest and best methods of treating patients to the bedside to take the absolute best care of them. The University Hospital is a place where you can be healed, you can be nurtured, you can be cared for, you can be guaranteed the best of what medical science can give you. Indiana University Hospital is a place where new miracles happen every day. Thank you.